Hi, I'm Jody Daly, and with me as usual is PLMA President Brian Sheriff. Hello, hello. How are you, and good, how good. was Amsterdam? Oh, it was very big. Define big. <laughs> big, big. In Chicago, we usually present about 2,000 exhibit booths from, let's say, 1,000 manufacturers. In Amsterdam, we use all 11 halls of the Rye Exhibition Center, so that's nearly 4,000 stands representing 2,000 manufacturers. And remember, in Amsterdam, we're talking about exhibitors and retailers from over 100 countries. That's big. Yes. Well, international has become a very important part of today's private label business. Retailers like Britain's Tesco, France's Carrefour, Germany's Aldi, and America's Walmart operate in many countries and often influence what retailers elsewhere do in the world. This is especially true in private label, where retailers eye each other for new product concepts, new package designs, and new ingredients. Well, market share tells the story. Two countries, Spain and Switzerland, actually have private label penetration of more than 50% by volume sold. Another four countries, Britain, Germany, France, Belgium, and Portugal, are up above 40%. The Scandinavian countries are near 30%, and even the former communist satellites of Eastern Europe are close to 30% as well. By comparison, U.S. unit market share is about 24 percent. Now one reason for the growth of private label are economic conditions. PLMA recently commissioned a survey of over 10,000 consumers in 14 countries to find out their attitudes about economy, shopping habits, and buying private label. Joe Azanaro was a senior research manager on the project and he joins us from California. Hi Joe. Hi Jody. So, Joe, tell me, what did the survey reveal about consumer attitudes toward private label? Jody, retailers and manufacturers involved in private label uh, can take great satisfaction uh, from the opinions that were expressed in this uh, study. It, the study makes clear that buying private label uh, is a permanent practice uh, among consumers and not at all a temporary reaction to hard economic times. So the combination of a high degree of purchase and a high regard uh, for the products makes private label a well-entrenched habit for consumers across all 14 of the countries uh, that were surveyed. Huh. Well, have consumers changed their shopping behaviors as a result of the economy? Yes. Uh, Two-thirds of the consumers in the study said they altered their shopping habits in response to the economy. Um, among the habits they changed, half reduced their uh, impulse buying and half bought more own brand products. Uh, consumers also credited supermarkets with helping them cope uh, by offering promotions and budget brands and improving the selection of own brands. Uh, in one of the more interesting uh, findings in the study, 70% uh, tried own brands for the first time in product categories where they had previously only bought the manufacturer's brand. Nine in 10 of those uh, after the trial said that the own brands compared favorably uh, with the manufacturer's brand that they previously bought. Okay, how would you say consumers in Europe do their weekly shopping? Shopping is a very carefully considered activity uh, on the part of European consumers. Uh, it's built around a shopping list, but there's ample time allocated for browsing and looking for deals. Uh, consumers shop often and they shop widely. Uh, nine in ten shop at least weekly. About the same number shop in more than one store. Uh, supermarkets are favored, 60% favor supermarkets over other types of chains. Um, most importantly, they look for alternatives before they make a decision. Uh, for example, before they buy a particular brand, 40% first see what other brands are available on the shelf, and 13% consider their own brand uh, if it's not their first choice. Um, if the brand is not available, uh, they don't postpone the purchase. They tend to go ahead and half buy a different brand and a third buy the own brand. So. Brand loyalty is clearly uh, not very strong. Uh, consumers seek value and savings, and in that kind of context, private label is clearly the beneficiary. Well, what is your prediction about private label's future growth in Europe? Consumers uh, affirmatively answered that question, Jody. Um, they fully expect to buy more private label. In fact, half told us they're buying more own brands now than a year ago, and more than one in four believe they will buy more a year from now. Thank you so much, Joe. The survey is particularly interesting because of the large number of participants. 10,000 is a lot of people to poll. 
the data had to be weighted by country so that tabulations would be as accurate as possible. The full report is available as a PDF by contacting PLMA. Just email research at PLMA.com. Now this year's show in Amsterdam reflected the pace of private label growth. Phil Russo is publisher of the new magazine Global Retail Brands and covered the show. Hi Phil. Hi Jody. So how did the show look to you? I've been exhibiting since 2003 and have to say that every year has been better than the last. There was a real energy on the show floor that lasted until closing and attendance seemed very strong. Well, what kind of products did you find on the show floor? Everything imaginable from more countries than I knew existed. I found two products in the Idea supermarket that made a real impression. One was a line of frozen baby food from French retailer Picard. The other was a selection of microwavable pet food from UK retailer Sainsbury's. As you see, the design and packaging of both are quite sophisticated and the innovation proves that retail brands are indeed leaders in many categories. The spray eye drops I found in the new product showcase really caught my attention as well. It's a convenient twist on a rather mature product that's just plain smart and solves a real problem. What are the manufacturers saying about the private label business in Europe? Well, it's no surprise that Europe is facing some rather difficult economic challenges, but the manufacturers at this show are not startups with new venture capital. They've seen business cycles before, and private label grows even in tough financial times. With rare exception, everyone I spoke to is optimistic about the future and ready to explore new markets. They are, however, working harder than ever, and competition for market share is fierce. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jody. Private label can be a difficult subject for coverage in Europe. You know, the French speak French, the Germans speak German, lots of people understand English, but it's not the first language in most countries. There are national magazines like The Grocer in Britain, LSA in France, Lebensmittel Zeitung in Germany, Aral in Spain. They all cover private label in their markets and in their languages. On the other hand, English is increasingly the language of cross-border commerce. So Phil is probably on the right track from that point of view. Well, it looks like we will see some competition for readers and advertisers, but competition is always good and expands the market in general. Well, retailers in Europe have competition on their minds, and we asked Roy White, our financial commentator, to look at how the major retailers across the Atlantic are doing. Retailers in Europe have been facing tremendous pressure as nearly every government is addressing economic conditions with increased taxes and reduced public spending. Spain is a microcosm of the crisis. Unemployment there is 25 percent. Consumer spending has tanked. Retail sales have steadily dropped each month for the past two and a half years. One retailer, however, has bucked the trend. That's Mercadona. This 1,400 store chain last year increased revenues, generated a 19 percent gain in profits, and widened its market share in Spain by over a point to 21 percent, and it's gone to 23 percent this year. It has done so by sticking to the basics, especially skew rationalization with brands and strong emphasis on private label that gives Spaniards maximum value for their thin incomes. Not surprisingly, private label market share in Spain is now over 50 percent, with Mercadona leading the way. Portugal's Geronimo Martins. They're the biggest supermarket player in Portugal with 350 Pingo Dulce supermarkets that employ 23,000 people. They expanded into Poland in the 1990s via acquisition, an unlikely expansion for an Iberian company. Geronimo Martins, though, is now the biggest grocery chain there with 1,700 Bydronka Supers and 28,000 employees. The net result? The Polish operations account for over 50 percent of the Portuguese company's revenues. Some retailers in Europe are avoiding cross-border growth and focusing on upgrading, modernizing, and enlarging their existing retail base. One such retailer is Lidl. Analysts dub this company an excellent performer and the master of the discount business and predict that it will soon surpass Tesco and Carrefour as one of the leading global retailers. But there's no longer talk of the U.S. market, and entry into Serbia is under review. Its new store format, launched in France, features upgraded in-store presentation, more fresh produce, and a more open-door policy on some branded products. Jody, that's what's happening in Europe. 
Thank you so much, Roy. Well, finally, let's just spend a few minutes on trends that might be coming over from Europe. One of the hottest trends there is something called click and collect. Now, we haven't seen much development of this trend in the U.S. yet, but Tim Simmons reports on the status of things in Europe. Thanks, Jody. Yes, things are different in Europe. Some of the largest retailers, Carrefour, Tesco, Leclerc, and Auchan, are making big investments in click and collect online retailing. Walmart's subsidiary in Great Britain, Asda, is also getting in on the act, as is Ahold in the Netherlands. What does click and collect mean? Well, the click part happens when shoppers go to a retailer's website, select products, pay by credit card, and then choose a time when they want the order ready to be picked up. The collect part comes when shoppers travel to get the order. The collection point could be a part of a store or a separate location that includes a parking lot. The trend started a few years ago in France. Carrefour and others created collection sites with enclosed car bays, resembling old-fashioned car washes. Called drive stores, they're usually located in suburban areas, where time-pressed moms love the convenience. In France, Carrefour says that 15% of households have done at least one shop using a drive-in, which is why Carrefour speeded up the development last year, with 175 openings bringing the total number of collection points to over 200. Retailers in Great Britain really jumped on the click and collect bandwagon last year, starting in non-food categories, but then moving into groceries. Tesco is rolling out click and collect services to about 1,400 stores. Walmart's Asda says sales results from grocery click and collect are outperforming expectations since it was launched late last year. Will click and collect ever make it over to the US? Don't be surprised if it does. Both Kroger and Walmart are taking a serious look at it. Back to you, Jody. Click and collect. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, thanks, Tim. And thank you for watching. I'm Jody Daly. And for Brian and everybody here at PLMA, we will see you next time.